I imagine that a lot of you have been following the Apple M1, Apple Silicon launch pretty closely like I have been. I'm not an Apple person. There's not a single Apple product in my house. Um, and that's not because, you know, I hate Apple or anything like that. It's just not typically the product for me. I'm a tinkerer. I'm a gamer. Um, and Apple products are, are, are great. Um, they're well polished. Their Apple is what the rest of my family uses. It's what my mom uses. It's what my sisters use. They're all very well polished in terms of their hardware and software experiences. But this M1 silicon is probably the first time in really a long time that I've, I've actually been really intrigued with an Apple product. So if you don't know, after several years of development, what Apple has done is they have launched what they're calling the M1 chip. And this is a really big deal because M1 chips are running on the ARM architecture as opposed to x86, which is what virtually every proper computer on the planet uses. So what they've done is they've leveraged their years of experience making chips in the iPhone, the iPad, and as well as in their watch line. They've leveraged that experience, that know-how to make a five nanometer chip for their computers and they've moved from intel based systems so you know intel i5 i7 etc to everyone just using the m1 chip so what's the benefit why would you move why would you upend everything and go from x86 to arm especially when considering that you're going to have to essentially recode to port your code over to an entirely different architecture what is the benefit when the cost seems to be so high well evidently when executed correctly the benefit is actually incredible arm processors essentially deliver more power for less energy so more performance for less power would probably be a more clear way to say it if you're wondering if you've ever used an arm based processor before you have it's probably in your pocket right now phones use arm processors in general snapdragon processors are arm your watch if it's a smart watch has an arm processor in it and the benefit is obvious the battery life in standby is much much greater than on x86 the power draw is much much lower so battery life is going to be better the creation of heat is far less and so you don't need a fan like you know you couldn't have built a surface duo with anything but arm because you would have had to have a fan in there it just doesn't work now granted if you run an arm processor at a really high frequency you may need a fan the nintendo switch runs arm and has a small fan but that's because they're pushing it pretty hard most of the time but in general if you've used something like most chromebooks your phone things like that an ipad maybe even an android tablet you know what the benefit is in terms of battery life you don't have to charge these things every day like you do most laptops or a lot of laptops and also it's not like these devices absolutely chug you can game on them you can do all sorts of things i know people that edit their videos on things like their ipad but the entry point that i want to take on this conversation is relative to what microsoft has done with their surface devices they launched the surface pro x a while back and they've iterated on it uh, already to go from the sq1 chip to the sq2 chip so you may be asking yourself, if the benefits are there, if it's more efficient, why haven't more people simply switched to ARM like Apple has? Well, they've tried. Microsoft has been working on ARM for like a decade now, and they have rolled out the Surface Pro X. And it, let's be honest, it didn't do that well. The performance is bad. The battery life is not that great either. For most people, if you're looking for a Surface device, buy the Surface Pro 7. Don't buy the Surface Pro X because the performance to cost, the battery life, it's just not there. It's an early adopter's device that is even too far out of left field for me to enjoy, which should really say something. I'm not shitting on the Surface Pro X. I'm sure some of you guys out there have one and enjoy it. Great, more power to you. It's really thin. I like the physical design of it better. But the biggest problem for me is app compatibility. The fact that there are still native Windows apps, the apps that Windows makes that are not natively compatible with the Surface Pro X is insane to me. So you've essentially got a device that is more expensive with a processor that is less powerful than something you could have gotten for less money in the same line with apps with app compatibility that is honestly shameful you've been working on this for 10 years why is this not 
better. We could have ignored most of that and had been ignoring most of that until the M1 launch. And look, you got to give the devil their due. And I'm calling Apple the devil right now. Take that as maybe some sarcasm. But when you look at what people are saying, the reviewers that have these M1 devices in hand, when you look at the comparison, when you look at what they're saying about these devices, it is nothing short of mind boggling. So obviously this is comparing with the SQ1 chip. So the SQ2 is a little bit more powerful, but I think that the biggest thing that you have to really pay attention to here is the fact that Apple's GPU is significantly more powerful than the Adreno 685 on the Snapdragon. The performance of the CPU is significantly more powerful than that of the Snapdragon. They're using a five nanometer process, which by the way is incredibly impressive and is definitely contributing to what's going on here. Looking here at a little benchmark that someone posted from uh, Twitter, look at, look at this. This is absolutely astonishing. The M1 with no fan is obliterating an i7-4790K. In single core, and absolutely crushing it in multi-core performance. So look, right then and there, it's not fair to just say that the M1 chips are more powerful than the SQ2 chip. They're not even in the same realm. They're, they're not even, you shouldn't even worry about comparing them. They're so incredibly far apart. And look, some of this can be contributed to the tight level of integration that Apple is going to be able to pull off. Because when it comes to the M1 chip and the devices that they're in, if you ask yourself, who made the hardware for that device? Apple. Who made the software for that device? Apple. Who made the silicon for that device? Well, that would be Apple. Whereas with the, the SQ2 and SQ1 chip, it is, a, it is a joint collaboration with Qualcomm. And on top of that, Windows has to be compatible with so many other pieces of hardware that it's difficult for Windows to make something so specifically uh, designed to run well on ARM. But now that Apple's done this, they're going to have to do so if they want to keep up. Let's look at some more stuff here in terms of the insanity that we're seeing on, on these devices. Let's look at a tweet here from MKBHD. So there's two things to point out here. First, he's talking about how Pixelmator Pro 2.0 has, has already been ported and has already been relaunched with native M1 support. Okay, this thing is not even like really out to the public in, in people's hands yet. And the app compatibility is probably already better than it is in Windows, and that's been going on for much, much longer. And the device, the Pro X, has been out for like a year now. And we still have worse app compatibility than Apple does. And then the, the text he actually wrote here, he said, I used the M1 MacBook Pro for an hour and a half on Safari last night and closed the lid with 96% battery. That is absolutely ludicrous. And it's something that we've been seeing from virtually everyone that is using this thing. The battery life is evidently unbelievable. Here's another one. Exported a 33-minute super demanding project on the 10th gen Intel MacBook Pro. Took four and a half hours to export. Battery died after an hour and 20 minutes. So it had to be plugged in. On the M1, it took 47 minutes to export. Battery was at 72% at the end. I, it's difficult to really overstate how incredibly impressive this is. And I hate to say it as a person who likes Microsoft, you just got dunked on so hard that it's honestly embarrassing. And let's look at one more tweet here. Apple transition arm one month. Now this is not truly fair because they've been working on this for more than one month. It's been, you know, as far as we've known that it's coming and now that it's out, most key, even third party apps are native from day one, great performance. Microsoft's transition arm, and again, this is, this is a false equivalence because they've not been working on this for one month. That's honestly a, a, a stupid thing to say. Um, clearly this has been going on for more than one month. It's been actually both have been working on it for many years but the state that they're in now multiple restarts and dead ends billions lost poor performance and many first party apps are not even arm native that part is fair we have devices for both on the market one is clearly far superior I think another angle that could be taken on this is what's going to happen with Intel. Intel is already suffering with AMD's Ryzen chips really beginning to eat their lunch. And now with Apple going to ARM, that's a whole chunk that they're not going to really be getting anymore. And, and look, if you're going to buy a new MacBook, maybe you wait till Gen 2 of M1 just to let everything settle out. 
but honestly, you could probably buy one right now and be totally fine with it. Better performance, better battery life, and less, less heat being generated. It's a win-win-win, and the fact that they've already got app support to where it is now is unbelievable. Microsoft, you have got to get your stuff together and get rolling on this. I would love nothing more than to have a Surface Pro X. The thing is sleek. It's slim. If I could have a Surface Pro X with the sorts of performance they're talking about, can we get 75% of the way to what they're talking about with the M1 chips? That would be fantastic. I'm going to say it right now. The M1 chips, what Apple has just done, when we look back in 10 years, it's going to be seen as one of the most significant things that a major manufacturer has done in the last 10 years. Someone had to go first, and you could say that Microsoft did with the Surface, but we're talking about the difference between what appears to be half-heartedly dipping your toe in the water versus Apple saying, screw it, we're going all in and we're doing this right. Not an Apple fanboy, just giving credit where it's due. Unbelievable job by Apple getting the M1 chip and ARM processors where they are. So guys, I hope you did enjoy my somewhat rambling discussion of ARM architecture M1 versus SQ1 and SQ2. Stay tuned for more videos like this in the near future. I do post a video pretty much every single day without fail, so do stay tuned for more videos like this. And until next time, stay nerdy, my friends. If you enjoy my content, please consider becoming a Scary If Literal member. You'll get access to a whole bunch of emoticons to use with live streams and a shout out on an upcoming video. Thanks as always for your continued support.